Sambisa forest. Now, we, we, we've heard that it's not even a forest. That is not a forest. T tell us about Sambisa forest. Well, I can't. Uh, Sambisa forest is very far away from us. I see. From I Chibok see. to Sambisa, according to what I have read in the, in the paper, it's almost 60 kilometers away, six, 60 kilometers away from even Goza Township. So I cannot able to tell anything about Sambisa Forest because it is a it, it is a very far place from I see, from I our see, place. I see. But so, uh, I just because some people have said it's not a forest, it's a savanna, it's a bush. Uh, how come we have we've had this problem locating the girls? There was a time the Nigerian uh, military authorities said that they had actually located them, but we're now being careful about how to retrieve them, and unfortunately. The U.S. and other people had said that, well, whatever the evidence is for that has not been shared with them. So they are not able to confirm that. Yeah. If you, uh, there, there was a man who, who is, he is an indigenous of Goza. According to what he's saying, the Sambisa forest is a thick forest, very, very serious forest. He said even, even in the daytime, if you didn't light a torch, like you cannot see anybody around you, according to what he said. But me particularly, I cannot... Uh, as I have said, I, mm -hmm. I cannot tell anything about it because I have never been there. Mm. Yeah. Um, Malama, I, are, you, are you a bit better now? Um, I, I, that's the mother on you. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, the irony here is that you're feeling this way, but your, your, your daughter you, is not among those that were affected, <coughs> but you still identify so closely that you got all emotional. I, I am a mother. And they take me to be mother. I've been working, I said, for 12 years with marginalized and fringe family. And I can feel their <coughs> emotion. I can feel their pains. And they cry to me because they don't have anywhere. Nobody listens to them. So if you give them listening ear, you hear things. You see things. When you say nobody listens to them, what, what has been your experience with them? Um government's response uh, in, in Chibok, uh, that is the state governor's race, government's race, because that's the immediate uh, governance, government. Well, I cannot say anything in regards to government because I'm not a government official. I know, official. But, but in terms of help, assistance, you're going about this as an NGO. Yes. Uh, uh, there must be some assistance. There should be some assistance. No? Uh, well, I would not like to talk on government because I'm not a government. Or what I'm after is to reduce the pain of these women, to give them hope that their children will come back tomorrow. Is anybody and else to doing cry this? Out, yes. To cry out to the world, the entire world, that we need help. <coughs> we need their support. We need them to come. We, de we need them to know that our girls are missing. The efforts that are going on to retrieve the girls, you, you have been following it in the press yourself. Uh, give me your impression. Are you, are you reassured? Well, everybody is doing what he's doing, and everybody has his own purpose of doing. But I know myself, so I cannot talk for anybody. All what I'm after is let the world hear our cry and come to our help so that our daughters will be discovered, so that these women will be able to be alive, so that these women will be happy again. Okay. Um, I, 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 um, Erica, we, we, we're working with, you've been working with three girls and, um, and their mothers, in addition to the other mothers that are still hopeful. Is there, a, is there a sense in which we can talk about how the girls escaped? We're happy they escaped. Um, what can you tell us about that? <coughs> what, um, what do you know? What were you advised happened? Um, I think that for security reasons, the best thing to focus on is that the girls have come here to bring their voices forward to plead and to beg that the rest of the girls would be returned. And those are the girls we're seeing on air right now. Those and are three of the girls. So have their mothers. They've all come to risk their lives and they've done this because they want the rest of the girls to be returned. And they've also come because 
they are in extreme amounts of pain and grief and suffering and they came to get help with their pain. And it's very important that they receive the specialized care services that they need so that these girls can recover and that they can be healed and walked through their trauma and live lives of freedom afterwards in uh, their communities where they should be. And then pick up their lives and absolutely with, um, absolutely. get on with it. Well, I, I want to I want to thank you uh, for coming on and sharing this with us. We need all the information we can get uh, at, at this stage. I want to thank you very much, uh, Erica Grieve, uh, founder of Unlikely Heroes, who works thank you for with victims me. of sexual slavery around the world, and uh, was invited to uh, Nigeria by. Um, uh, well, um, actually, you 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 came via. Gabasawa Women Correct. and uh, chil uh, Children and Empowerment And the Amaluabi Network. And, and the Amaluabi Network, because Gabasawa, right. they touched Amaluabi. Correct. Okay, so thank you very much thank for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Malama Kucheli. Thank you. So and, and thank uh, you for caring about the girls and their mother's pain. Indeed, every Nigerian cares. Yes. And uh, Pastor Philip, um, uh, thank you as well, but you're going to stay with us because I want to bring on the mothers next, okay. and uh, um, you will translate for us. Yes, sir. This is an act of pure evil. It's united people across the planet to stand with Nigeria to help find these children and return them to their parents. Uh, we are going to do everything we can to assist uh, Nigeria in their efforts to find and free uh, those young women. We should be clear, this is not just a Nigerian issue, it is a global issue. There are extreme Islamists around our world who are against education, against progress, against equality, and we must fight them and take them on wherever they are. Bring back our girls. TVC News, through African Eyes. Um, we're looking at the Chibok girls. Uh, some of them have managed to escape and uh, are now receiving care of um, therapists. And uh, you, you've seen some of the girls on. Now we're bringing on the mothers. Now we're bringing on some of the mothers. And um, you already know about uh, Pastor Philip, uh, who is in the house. But then the mothers that have joined us, let me start from Mary, sitting uh, on my left. Uh, Mary Manu is uh, Asabe's mother. Um, uh, Mary, good morning. Good morning, And sir. thank you very much for coming on. Uh, Asabe is uh, one of Mary's five children, and Asabe is the, her eldest child. Is that correct? Yes. And um, on my right is uh, Mary Manu, by the way, is uh, 35. And um, on my right is Monica Stover. Uh, she is Saraya's mother. And um, Monica is 54. Um, Monica, is Saraya your only daughter? No. You have other children, five others? Yes. Four others? No. No. What's the situation? Ten. Okay, you have ten other children. Yes. Where, where, where does Saraya, is she in the middle? Is she the first, the last? No, middle. She's somewhere in the middle. Okay, thank you very much for coming on, Monica, and uh, indeed accept our, you know, we, we identify with you in spirit. All Nigeria identifies uh, with all of the mothers. Thank and uh, sitting right next to Monica is 58-year-old uh, Ruth Beatrice. Uh, Ruth is the mother of two daughters, actually, that um, uh, were abducted by Boko Haram, Hawa and Godia. Um, as I said, Ruth is 58, and those are just two of her children. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the program, uh, Ruth. Um, they don't speak English at all, but then Pastor Philip here uh, will translate for us. Um, let me come back to Mary. Uh, Mary, Sir? the rest of us, all of Nigeria, can only imagine what you would have felt when the news came to you that your daughter was among. Uh, Mary, please tell me what you felt, how you heard the news, and uh, what happened in your household. Mm -hmm. 
Jadi terang kada pendapat dong kaya ni. Tapi total satu hari yang mungkin ni mah. When she heard that these girls are adopted, she even faint at that point. She fainted. She fainted. Because Mary was supposed to, I mean, Asabe was supposed to be in school. Yeah. Uh, when, how, when did she hear? How soon after they were abducted did she hear? This thing happened on Monday night, and before she had it, it's, it, it was on Tuesday around 8 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm going to come back to her. Uh, Monica, when, how did you hear that your daughter, who was in a uh, girl secondary school, Chibok, uh, writing an examination, um, how did you hear and tell me uh, your household, what, what happened in there, your, your husband, your other children? Uh, give us some sort of a picture of how you received this uh, horrible news. Wei sangat tergigit dengan tentang apa yang dapat mengkhayal kita kuma fa antu syangang kaya kuat dan dapat kasangwa gede keringa salingnya matu si nama ibu wa memetik keringa wa aku sangat anda. Dengan apa yang tidak kira lang kaya dijiji, tu sangat itu ramai mari antu apa tu aku tu yang mari kita tol tu kuarna tu ani gila kau hala ane tiar mara kau bela bela mana dengan apa yang dapat kakak kaya syang antu kaya yang mesra ke syangah hani. So ani kita ni setiap kau mahu, tu yang mara kau makan tan dari memori, ni fato kau yang nari dah sang darah dia, tu ani ika ketemasan ika kadu, so ani dah lihat pun kau nak dapat, pun kau nak dapat, nanti kau wal sini kau CV. Somebody phone her that night that these people have have come to Gigi, and when the day break, she she started coming from her village to Chibok. And uh, when she came, then people told her that are, the, the old girls are adopted. And when she went to the school, she discovered that there's no girl in the school and the school was burned. And she, comp she was completely, uh, she became very weak and very dull and she became sad at that particular time. Mm. Uh, uh, what was Saraya's father's reaction? When we are at the ground, we are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. Her daddy passed through surgery. He is not even feeling fine that particular time. He is not well. So at that point, when he heard of the happening again, it became another story again. Even up to today, he is not. He is on bed sick. Ruth, Ruth Beatrice is 58, and uh, she actually, two of her daughters were in the school, Hawa and Godia, and uh, they are still yet to be uh, rescued. Um, Ruth, how did you hear the news? Well, I Sakanam itu baru kuri dama ini kerana sakar kini dia baru wajar nak kuma kerana tetapi nanti yang lima makanan tayar uhi itu memari. Tu sakanam itu sehari hari kita masin seni sumpah dan hari hari kau cina kiri hari kau masin nasua. Iba dah sehari hari asal tu nih jemar kita nurwaz yang nasi siu itu raya lima kau cuba hari jenuh di masin hari jenang ri. Kehar dari sehari hari kehar kerba zaka zaka hari hari senam dalam mayar idu kuba. Bayang tiap hari kau nyeru kerba zaka aku all misa anten kuala kau kau makanan tanam tarat idu kuba antara hari hari iya. Kau siang adi wah, kau siang tu terakre. Tuh senam terasi aku ni awit tinggi dia berkay. Macam dengar nak apa? Orang na anti tinggi dasar jauh itu biasa nak kengri. Ani ada umar, ada umar hari itu aku makan tinggi umar tu. Tuh nanti amar tu dah aku ukur dalam bantah. Tiap sebab anak kau jauh kengri kau itu amat umar tinggi. Anda setiap hari berat tinggi juga ala peraga alit dina. Apa sahaja nanti kita nama farang yang kita umur umar kita live. That night when this happened in the chibok on Monday night. The, she heard of the shooting of the guns in the Chibok. So as early as in the morning, she told her husband that this thing that has happened, let's try, let's go to Chibok in order to see our daughters. And when they came to Chibok, 
and uh, they are go to one of their brother's house and the man is trying to give them something to eat she says she will not be able to eat until she see her daughters and when they went to the school she discovered that everything there was burned and she she tried to locate where uh, their hostel is that she normally visited them when she when it, when she reached there everything was burned and at that particular point she began to be uh, she, she all her body is shaking and until when somebody is strengthening or somebody help her if not she uh, she's going to fall at that particular point this is an act of pure evil. It's united people across the planet to stand with Nigeria to help find these children and return them to their parents. Uh, we are going to do everything we can to assist uh, Nigeria in their efforts to find and free uh, those young women. We should be clear, this is not just a Nigerian issue, it is a global issue. There are extreme Islamists around our world who are against education, against progress, against equality, and we must fight them and take them on wherever they are. Bring back our girls. CBC News, through African eyes.